it's my great pleasure to uh, introduce uh, Professor uh, Koji Hashimoto from Osaka University. Um, so let me just um, briefly go through his uh, uh, history. So Professor Hashimoto received his uh, PhD from uh, Kyoto University in 2000, and uh, I mean he went to Santa Barbara uh, for postdoc for a year, and rapidly was made uh, an assistant professor at the University of Tokyo in 2001. Then after spending some time uh, in Tokyo University, then he moved to Riken to, uh, in 2010 to become an uh, associate chief scientist. And uh, only last year, he finally moved to his uh, current place at Osaka University to become a full professor. So Professor uh, Hashimoto's uh, major research interest is string theory. And and uh, recently, his focus has been applying holographic technique to, uh, uh, to apply to various other uh, uh, physical systems, for example, in country CD, in nuclear uh, physics, and uh, in today he's going to talk about uh, condensed matter. And I would like to emphasize that in addition to uh, being a brilliant uh, young scientist, uh, Professor Hashimoto has also uh, been an excellent uh, ex basically a uh, popularizer of uh, string theory like in Japan. And in fact, some of you may even see his video or even his book uh, in English. So I'm sure today's uh, uh, colloquium will be very stimulating and hopefully inform informative to uh, the students. OK, so let's welcome him. Thank you. Uh, I'm Koji Hashimoto from Osaka in Japan. Uh, I'm a super string theory. You know what is super string theory? If you don't know, then you need to buy some book. <laughs> <laughs> um, super string theory is a, a candidate for a theory which unifies all matters and forces in this universe. It's a candidate. And people are working on this for long years. And uh, eventually, we find a really interesting relationship between this uh, super string theory, which is a complicated mathematical framework, to the real world. So that's um, uh, the aim of this talk. So here, the, uh, oh, for the, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, first of all, I need to thank uh, Mr. Ken for the invitation and all the organizers here. And um, I'd like to thank all of you here to share this one with you. Uh, I've come here in November again for a <laughs> So if you have deeper questions, then please come to me in November here. Good. Um, the, ti the title of uh, this talk is From Super String to Condensed Matter. Um, uh, here is a copy of my uh, recent paper written with uh, Professor Oka in the University of Tokyo. He, he is a condensed matter theorist. And I'm a pure super string. And we are writing this uh, paper together, and it, it's actually about condensed matter theory. So how does this super string theory come out as a condensed matter theory? That's the most interesting part of this talk. But unfortunately, I cannot, uh, today I cannot talk about real condensed matter theory. And I apologize. The reason is that here I can see several condensed matter theories in the audience. And if I claim that my theory is actually a condensed matter theory, then I'll be blamed. <laughs> Since this is just a super string theory, not a condensed matter theory. But our intention is to apply our mathematical method to condensed matter theory. And uh, the judgment is, of course, at your head. If you think that this is condensed matter theory, then this is condensed matter theory. <laughs> So, so what uh, I'm concentrating on in this talk is this. So here is a picture taken from condensed matter theory paper. It's a one-dimensional mod insulator. And on your uh, left, this is a picture coming from our paper. It's on QCD. QCD is a clock, uh, 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 a dynamics which describes quarks and gluons in particles. It's not condensed matter. But here, as you can easily see, there is a similarity between these two. So what is this, this picture? In this picture, I consider, so, so they consider this a one-dimensional mod insulator. It's just an insulator. And 
you put some electric field on the fly the electric field on this material. And here, the uh, uh, horizontal axis is the strength of this electric field applied. And this vertical axis here is measuring the instability. In fact, it's an um, imaginary part of the Hamiltonian. If, if your Hamiltonian has an imaginary part, then of course it means some decay process is something, something else. And here, uh, this is insulated. So if it applies enough strong uh, energy field, then things become a different phase. So originally it was an insulated phase, but if you apply too much voltage to that, then of course the electric current flows. So that's a different phase. And this uh, imaginary part gives you a transition from this insulator phase to the uh, conducting phase. And these dots are the computation with using the numerical simulations for this mock insulator arrangement. And this, uh, these lines are given by some of approximation formulas. And this condensed matter theory uh, for measuring this uh, uh, instability is very important. For example, in your iPhone, you have iPhone, you, there, are I, I, uh, there are IC tips. In this IC, IC tips, if you put electricity, uh, electric voltage, then of course uh, there is a current. And suppose that you have two, uh, two uh, conducting rods in this IC tip. If you put a, a huge uh, voltage between these two rods, then of course the insulator between these two rods will be broken down to the current. And that's a serious problem in the IC tips. So to know this uh, imaginary part in real material is a very important problem in condensed matter. Okay. So that's why people are working really hard on this problem. On the other hand, in your left, this is a so-called QCD matter problem, which I, I, I'd like to talk about. Okay. This is the electric field, the horizontal axis is the same. The vertical axis is actually, again, the imaginary part of the Hamiltonian. I want to know this uh, imaginary part called QCD. QCD is the theory for quarks and muons. The reason will come up. OK, so here, uh, actually, uh, this uh, uh, left-hand figure was derived by using QCD is a theory of uh, particles. But we can apply in certain situations this is a super string mathematics to compute this imaginary part, and then you get this picture. And that looks very similar to the common part. But I want to emphasize that there is a huge similarity between these two uh, subjects. Yeah, this is elementary particle physics, this is condensed physics, but there is a similarity. There is a, a, a problem which can be shared by both subjects. And for those kind of uh, programs, we can use superstring technology to solve uh, these uh, problems. So what is the real question concerning this uh, QCD? I'll show you what is the frontier of QCD matter subject. That is this. This is a picture of the observation which, uh, which indicates the supernova You can find this kind of picture in every in the sky. And after the super, so suppose that we have a huge gigantic star. At the end of the uh, lights, uh, they, they are occurs uh, the supernova explosion. And after that, if this uh, star is heavy enough, then you will uh, be left with a black hole at the center of this explosion. But if this uh, star is not heavy enough, then the remnant is actually a neutron star, which is a huge, uh, heavy atomic nucleus bound by gravity. So this neutron star is a very, very interesting object. And actually, you can, uh, as we, we could find uh, these neutron stars in our galaxy, uh, uh, I think uh, more than hundreds of neutron stars are already found in our galaxy. So these are uh, real objects in the sky, and we want to know what it is. And I mean, the, the question is, uh, we, we never know what is residing inside the neutron star. Neutron star is a very, very heavy object. It's too heavy, uh, so we, we never know what uh, the fate of this neutron star was. How heavy?
city city uh, uh, in Japan uh, our uh, in Japan uh, the highest mountain in Japan is Mount Fuji you don't have Mount Fuji if you have been to Japan then you should see this mountain it's a beautiful mountain yeah. and if you condense this Mount Fuji to one cubic centimeter then that's the density This is a picture which I've stolen from the internet. Uh, on your left, there's a, a home page by page. <laughs> and uh, you can see this uh, picture, a cartoon picture of Newton. Here, uh, this is the expected, uh, 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 expected picture of Newton. The radius of this Newton is about 10 kilometers. The mass of the Newton is almost the same as the mass of the sun. So suppose the sun is going to be shrunken into 10 kilometers of a cubic sun. Then that's a neutron star. Neutron star consists of only, or almost only neutron. You know uh, atomic nucleus? Uh, atomic nucleus is consist, uh, consists of uh, protons and neutrons. And it's a really dense one. But if you put atomic nucleus on top of each other, has a density of um, And here you can see the question. This is a big question. Nobody knows what is uh, the phase of this uh, central part. Central part. If you can work out the QCD calculation to reveal what is inside the field, then you will be Professor QCD. It's true. So on your right, here is an expected picture for the phase diagram of the QCD. The horizontal axis is the density, and the vertical axis is the temperature. Okay? So if you heat up the thing, then the thing will become a plasma phase. This is called quantum group neuron plasma. You are here. This is a so-called analog phase in which you have a proton and neutron. Those are bound state of quarks. It's called confining. Folks are confined into the inside of this proton and neutron. And if you increase the density, then there is a huge question mark here. Nobody knows whether there is a critical point here and critical line. This is expected by some model computation. Nobody knows what is happening here. And of course, there is no observation for this area. And if you can work out uh, this uh, QCD program, and then uh, uh, compute the phase diagram and get the exact expression for this phase, phase diagram, then this part will be mapped into the flow of the neutron star, and it can be directly observed by someone's field. QCD Lagrangian is very simple. I draw the QCD Lagrangian here. It's a very, very simple Lagrangian. can be written just one by just one line. Okay. There is a kinetic term for neuron, and there is a kinetic term for quark, and there is an inversion term here. Okay. And that's it. It looks very, very simple. And uh, it means that I, maybe you can attack this problem even though you are an student. Since you know the Lagrangian, and you know quantum mechanics, then you can attack this problem. But the point is that even though people are working on this program for uh, many, many years, nobody knows what is uh, happening in the highest degree. Okay. So uh, 
this uh, slide is focused on QCD, but if you look at the phase diagram of IPC superconductor, right, then there is a big similarity between these two. Here you have a superconducting phase, here you have color superconducting phase, and also there is an insulator phase here, insulator phase here. Around the phase, you have a whole confinement, so there is no way to put some electricity. So there is no electric current. So it, and uh, this uh, IPC supercomputing, even though there are many materials known which exhibit this IPC supercomputing phase, there is no uh, promising theory explaining this phase. So we are in the same situation. QCD lacks the computation of this phase diagram. On the other hand, this matter theory they learn how to compute this phase The point which are shared by these two subjects is one thing, that is strong coupling. Even though you have a Lagrangian, uh, I will explain uh, why this is it's difficult to uh, compute this Lagrangian. For example, suppose you want to show the passion factor from this Lagrangian. How, how can you compute this? There is a problem of strong coupling. And actually, uh, for high PC superconductors, it is known that strongly correlated electrons form a pair. And that's how you get this superconductor theory. But once the theory is strongly coupled, it's very difficult to analyze, even though you have a theory. So the theory. OK. So from now, I concentrate on this QC diagram and its relation to neutron spin. This is uh, called QC matter flow. So what's the situation current uh, for the that here? So here is a plot, uh, I will explain that a bit later, of the neutron star. The uh, horizontal axis is the radius of the neutron. The vertical axis is the uh, mass so if you find one uh, uh, neutron star, which uh, and suppose that you can measure the radius at the same time as the mass, then you have a point in this plot. And there are many lines here. These lines are given by approximately solving this QCD theory. As I said, it's very difficult to analyze this QCD. So you have to uh, rely on some approximation for phenomenological model. That's why there are many lines, many, many lines. Once you pick up one phenomenological model, then you have one line. On the other hand, what is interesting is that we have a recent, a very good development of observation of neutron stars. We are finding many, many neutron stars. And in some cases, you can actually measure mass and the radius at the same time. Then it gives you a point in this picture. And once this observation develops uh, in, in several years from now, then you have a collection of those points which can determine this line. And this line is actually one to one correspondent to the equation of state. So of course, as, as a theorist, I want to solve this QCD to get one line in this picture and show that line to the people who are working as an observation. But the reality is, even though we are pushing this, we never get these lines directly from QCD. So observation is uh, now getting stronger and stronger, and it pushes us. So it's a fight between. The radius, yeah. Uh, due to my little knowledge of this observation, okay. this uh, neutron star gives you a short burst. And if you measure the burst, then from the luminosity and the uh, theory which is behind of the nuclear reaction on the surface, you can actually approach uh, give an approximation to the radius. That, that's one. And the other way is that uh, in some, some neutron stars are uh, having. Uh, 
light curve has a function of time, then we can see the influence of this curve. There is that two things. But there are uh, other ways. I, I heard that there are other ways. Indirect equations. So the situation is like this. Observation is pushing us. And here we have a big question. We, we want to solve this uh, QCD theory to get a reliable line here to be crossed. OK, this is the end of my talk, uh, the end of my introduction. If <laughs> 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 you really understand this uh, question, then you can Um, from now on, I'll explain a little bit of the super string theory. Uh, the section one is uh, about the, one, the question is super string physical gravitation. And then, uh, if I convince you that the super string theory is useful, then I come to section two, the duality notion, which is the theory. And then I will uh, summarize it as how it is But the uh, summary of my talk is. Uh, Superstring mathematics resolve to sit in strongly correlated systems. Strongly correlated systems include, for example, QCD or strongly correlated electron systems, which is responsible for uh, high QC superstring. And for those very difficult theories, actually, superstring theory may help for you to solve the theory. Do you have any questions? with this as uh, uh, several slides to convince you that super string theory is useful. This is a list of my publications. <laughs> uh, it's just one stick. I started working on super string theory in 1997, and it's right now. And I divide my papers into two categories. One is without unit. The other is with units. <laughs> <laughs> units meaning meter, uh, second, uh, electron volt, uh, such. And you see that in my recent papers, they are with units. But uh, for this uh, one ten years, I have been writing papers without any units. So it means that uh, this is, uh, of course, all of these are uh, super things. But uh, this means that uh, this is just a super string, but uh, this is useful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, why this is useful? Because it includes units. Yeah. It can, I, I, I can communicate with uh, many other people. <laughs> so how it comes with uh, units? Actually, uh, if you have an experiment, experience for publishing a paper, then there is a so-called notion of gross distance. You first put your paper on the sort of archive in the internet. And I'm publishing my papers in this high-end physics theory category, step theory. But if I want to advertise my papers to other uh, people in the other subject, then I can cross this. And this is uh, uh, my cross this uh, history. So astrophysics, finance physics, phenomenology, nuclear theory, finance physics, Laris, and uh, Konesmata. Now, as you can see, uh, super string theory techniques can be used for attacking some problems which are difficult to solve in these subjects. I, I, of course, I, I, I wouldn't claim that I solved all of those questions, I, I could, but at least I could attack these questions. And this is the uh, and it seems that uh, here I don't write a pure super string papers, but it's not. Actually, these papers are pure string theory papers, but it can be eventually applied to various subjects. So, for example, in QCD, what is the problem? In the papers which are uh, close listed to nuclear theory and high energy physics terminology, there was a long standing problem. 
So here is the force. We know that everything is composed by force and Bruno. Our body is composed by force and Bruno. But the theory describing this is QCD. Now, at the end, of course, we know that there are atomic nuclei and even neutrons. Those are formed by atomic nuclei. So to go from here to get here, there are two steps. The first one is to form nucleons, protons and neutrons, and hadron, and meson, ion, and so Those are called bound states. So we need to solve this Q4, a fork and gluon diamond, to get this uh, neutron hadron first. And then, uh, once you get nucleon and uh, those interactions between neutron and baryon, hadron, baryon, and meson, then you start thinking of those nucleons as, uh, as point particles, and then consider interaction between those two as a fundamental interaction, and then start nuclear physics. Nuclear physics Lagrangian is based on point-like systems. Here, uh, unfortunately, we forget what is the origin of uh, those particles and interactions. Actually, we know that uh, it's coming from QCD, but once you get the interactions and mass spectrum of nucleons, then we can forget the dynamics, and then we start resolving uh, nuclear physics to get this. So there are two steps. However, of course, if you want to know the real physics happening here, then it's better not to have two steps like that. There is, if there is a direct way from here to here, that's better. And I'm saying that superstring may offer a way to get directly from QCD to Why is that possible? Why did there were two, two steps here? The reason is that QCD is strongly complex. What is a problem? Here in, my, uh, in this hour slide, I will explain what is a problem. This is a Lagrangian for QCD, as I said. So we will get the return. Please don't activate it here. This is just a sense of theory why this is difficult. So this is a growth kinetic term, this is a kinetic term, and there is an interaction term stimulating some growth proliferation of interaction term. And because of this interaction term, it looks very simple, but highly moving. If you want to get the phase diagram, then of course you have to compute the partial function. In quantum mechanics, once you have a Hamiltonian, then you exponentiate it and take a sum over all the states, then you get a partial function. Once you get a partial function, then you can draw the phase diagram. So the problem in QCD is that now the Hamiltonian is given here. Lagrangian is given. So you need to compute the partial function. But since this is nonlinear, partial function is very difficult to be evaluated. So this is a, 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 a I'll explain why it is. So let's consider this integer. This is simple integral. And this is something like a partial function. The reason is that once you have given uh, have been given uh, Hamiltonian for quantum mechanics, then you put this Hamiltonian on the exponent. Okay. It is e to the Hamiltonian times L. Then you make an integral over the index. So that's a definition of partial function in particular format. Okay. So you want to compute something like this. If the Hamiltonian is just x squared, then you can easily do the integral of this. It's a Gaussian integral, so it's easy. However, once you have some interaction term, it's non-linear, then things get difficult. It's almost impossible to do the computation. What you usually do is to suppose that this g is very, very small, and pretty 